Hello everyone. My name is Renuka, Assistant Professor in Department of Electronics and Communication, Maharaja Institute of Technology, Mysore. So as we have uh, studied in the previous session about the different types of uh, uh, real-time systems, let us now get into the important aspects of computer control in real-time systems. Okay. The concept of uh, computer control uh, basically aims uh, aim. The first is uh, explains the terms used in process control applications and to provide examples of particular type of applications. Then you have describe in general terms the various types of control strategies that are used. Then explains and compares the basic computer configuration used for control. Explains the importance of human computer interface. So under these four uh, major aims, we are going to learn about the concept of computer controls. We all know that uh, computer is uh, part and parcel of life and it is used for uh, immense applications. And when you come across the industrial applications, then we can generally uh, classify them into uh, four major uh, headers. Okay, That is the application of computer industrial process control is batch. The first one is batch, the second would be the continuous and then you have laboratory or the test. Okay. So now when we talk about a batch, what is a batch? Batch is using but a sequential operation of certain important tasks that has to be done one after the other and if there is a sequential operation then we say that this batch has completed. The best example is uh, we usually talk about engineering students, correct? Uh, I'm not just comparing that with an industrial application, but just to give an example, we say 2019 batch, 2018 batch. So what do you mean by that? So they will be exposed to certain academic curriculum in that particular batch, isn't it? After that batch, we have the next batch coming up and they study the same or there might be variation in the subjects, right? So we have batch. Batch is what? It is nothing but, it is defined as the process in which a sequence of operations are carried out to produce a quantity of a product. Okay, So a product is a, a good student will be a product. Okay, If you talk in terms of industry, it is called as a product. right? So the end entity is the product. So the sequential operation is nothing but the steps which are mainly used to get that end product. right? So it, it is actually repetitive. So after the first batch, it will not stop at that. The same sequence will be repeated. Probably the configuration or the composition which is required for the next batch would be changed. Okay? Or uh, you, know, you can talk about the total time duration would be changed. Okay? It depends on the kind of product you want. But there is a sequential operation again. And after each batch, there is a repetitive steps that needs to be incorporated. So the best example here is uh, the rolling of sheet steels. In the slide below, you can see that uh, there is a sheet roller, the steel sheet roller as shown in the PPT. So now what does it, uh, the first picture shows about the thick metal which will be rolling on, correct? There is an eye gut. Eye gut is inserted into the rolling, okay? And then there is a process that is involved in bending those sheets, right? The composition, the dimension, okay, will be changed based on our requirement, right? So the best example here, as I've told you, is a rolling of sheets and I get passed through a rolling mill. So there is a rolling mill, as you have seen in the first slide. And the other two slides, if you just see, there is a variation in the dimension of the sheets, correct? It could be drawn as a... A thin sheet or it could be a roller sheet okay or it could be a thick metal which could be bent okay talks about different kinds of sheets rolling sheets that are usually used in rolling mills okay. setting up of time the time taken to prepare the equipment for the next production batch so for example there is a, there is some kind of uh, uh, chemical composition that needs to be added to you know roll the sheet the, 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 the density of the material, the thickness of the material has to be set, isn't it? For a rod, it would be different. For a thin sheet, it would be different, right? So to set up the time for that particular production, what happens? There is a gap, 
Okay? So that gap is nothing but when the equipment uh, is ready for the production uh, for the next part. So there is a waste of time if you want to change the composition, the structure, uh, the, the ductility of the wires, whatever you're going to send, it, what happens if you have to uh, reprogram it, then there is a waste of time, okay? There'll be no manufacturing happening at that, that duration of time. That's, that needs to be kept in mind if you're looking into any batch processing, okay? One is the setup time, other is the waste time. Because if you have, if you think about a large production, if you have the composition to be added on, and if you, have, you, if you consume a lot of time, the production level will go down. And definitely the outcome, the product outcome will be delayed, right? So we have to keep in mind these waste time as well as the setup time to add on the comp composition that is required for a particular uh, production. Next, uh, how is it related? So we have batch size. If I talk about the first batch size, say about 10 components are ready. The second batch is 20 components. So the batch size is mainly dependent on two important elements here. One is called as the operation time. The other is called as a setup time. The batch size uh, is given by the operation time and the setup time. So if you decrease the setup time, if you decrease the setup time, what will happen to the batch size? Definitely it will increase, right? And if you increase the batch, that is the setup time, what will happen? The batch size will reduce. So you have to keep in mind this particular expression. The batch size is mainly dependent on the operation time and the setup time. Okay. Now let us get into the second, which is called as continuous. Okay. So what is this continuous? Let us look into the description. Okay. Description says a system in which the production is maintained for a long period of time with output inter interruptions several months or years, okay? So continuous as the name itself indicates, it is a process that requires continuous production. For example, the crude petroleum, okay? So continuous here is extraction of this crude oil will be continuous and there is absolutely, there should be no interruption in continuous stream and there can be multiple batches that could be involved in a continuous system. So here crude, uh, crude oil, various products uh, fraction, fractionates uh, without uh, uh, you know, halting the process. So all the fractionates like the petroleum, petroleum jelly and uh, kerosene, petrol, diesel, so all these are the end products, right? And those are nothing but the fractionates of all these uh, you know, extraction of crude oil. So once the crude oil is extracted, which is continuous, and then you have all these batches which will be concurrently running in different, you know, time slot. In the same time slot, you have concurrent operations of batches, which will give you the extract of all these petroleum products, right? So that's an example. So, but there could be some problem. Uh, so the changeover from uh, one specification to another, which has to be scrapped. So what happens if you want, say, for example, the you know, uh, if you say Vaseline is one of the petroleum products, okay? So if you want the texture of the Vaseline to be changed during the production time, so you need to add some additives to it. You have to add some composition, different composition. So what happens? The new batch, since it is continuous, you, can stop, you cannot stop that production, isn't it? It is continuous. The production is going on. But the new entity when you add, if you're adding some tinge into it, the color, okay into that vaseline what will happen the whole other batch what, what whatever has been produced has to be scrapped okay so the, the the quicker you add the additives that's why i have told you previously about the setup time okay when you add the composition it has to be very quick and correct so that you get the complete batch process uh, and the product would be excellent okay so there'll be no wastage of any product uh, either so what happens? The changeover from one specification to another, which has to be scrapped because the product, you know, in between the old and the new has to be eliminated. The changeover should be very short and it should be very smoother. Why is it smoother? Because it is continuous, okay? Because in continuous system, you cannot halt the plant and get the extract. That is not possible because there will be a wastage of time and the production time will be, uh, you know, hampered. Next, uh, 
usually the continuous system could be uh, a part process, what is a part process or it could be a complete process. For example, uh, if you take about you know chemical industries or you can say baking industries are the best examples where uh, you don't have continuous process just like the crude oil, correct? There you can have a batch as well as continuous, not the whole plant need not be continuous. Okay, so they'll have what is called as a part processing, part continuous processing. Processing is not continuous processing, it is, it is like a plant also incorporates continuous processing in it along with a batch, right? So continuous and for example, you have a bakery product, okay? So if you want to have uh, the dough prepared, so there is a, some amount of water, there are so many additives and you get a dough, correct? So that will be a batch. So the dough for first batch, second batch would be done sequentially. Okay. And now if you want bread as a product it is derived from what? It is derived from the output of the batch processor. Correct. That is your, the mix what you have. And that mix will be sent over a conveyor. So this conveyor will be sent, you know, uh, serially along the uh, ovens. So when it goes throughout, okay it becomes continuous so it will have different temperature at that set temperature you have a loaf of bread ready okay it is continuous process entire mixture is batch you have a batch but later on it becomes continuous so it it is like a mixed mode so to get this mixed mode there is a problem what is the problem it is very difficult to identify at what batch have we got the desired output to find out whether uh, the loaf of the bread is good, bad and it might lead to the uh, problem in the end product that is the, uh, the loaf of bread might be too big, too small and to identify and eliminate is tedious. Okay. Next we have what is called as laboratory or test. What is this? Uh, it is usually an operator initiated one. So initiated uh, when computer will be uh, will control some complex experiment test or routine test. Okay. For example, uh, control and analysis of data for a vapor phase uh, chromatography or it could be an audiometer testing of tones using SLM and uh, computer and certificate generated by the test computers. And the third would be steel production using furnace, raw material scrap and alloy composition testing of sample using spectrometer calculation of additives to be added. So now in laboratory what happens there is an who, there will be an operator or it could be completely computer controlled or you can call it as a supervisory control fine. Here usually we these uh, are nothing but like a chemical industries where you need to have a supervisor to check and control control the chemical compositions or if it is a steel industry uh, you know uh, wherein the uh, to know the if you want steel rods then the ductility of the uh, the material the composition which has been added has to be tested because you can't go with the production uh, you know the sequence as it is you have to get a product check on the sample and once the sample is okay then you have to go for the production scale for a large scale right so that is one such example and then you have what is called as audiometer audiometer is nothing but uh, testing of uh, hearing capability. So we know that human is capable of hearing from say about 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, right? So we have an audiometer. It is just nothing but a, a signal generator, a signal generator with different different frequencies at different frequencies, right? Say about 20 to 20 kilohertz. Now, if you want to manufacture an audiometer, first you have to make sure there are sounds which are imported onto it right for which you need to have a computer a system a system will have all the sounds of different frequencies which will be sent on to your audiometer and from the audiometer you have different frequency let me take an example of 20 kilohertz tone okay because in uh, audiometer we have what is called as a sound pressure level SPL it is usually measured in dBSPL decibels for a sound pressure level. So now what happens when you have these frequencies been fed 20, uh, 2 kilohertz frequency is been fed from the computer to a uh, audiometer 
now you need you, you need to know whether the audiometer is able to generate that 2 kilohertz how do you do it so the 2 kilohertz signal is generated now once it is generated we have what is called as slm sound level meter okay what do you have in the sound level meter you have a precision uh, a microphone and then you have an amplifier and you have a recorder so what will it do it will sense all the pressure the sound pressure level which is generated by the audiometer it picks up all the sound levels and then it gives what is the sound pressure level of that particular sound once the sound level is obtained from slm it is fed to the because you can definitely connect you can either take a printout from slm or you can directly connect that output to a computer to get a printout as to certify the test of on a uh, 2 kilohertz frequency like that we can also go with what is called as laboratory or the test which is mainly controlled by the supervisor so these are some of the examples okay so we have dealt with what do you mean by batch uh, what is uh, continuous and other is the laboratory setup okay next uh, no matter whatever industries we take they are always uh, all the activities can be summarized and classified under these different heads it can be combination of one or two okay of the uh, uh, activities listed here the first is what is called as data acquisition the second is called as a sequence control then you have a loop control then you have supervisory control data analysis data storage and human computer interface that is hci so no matter whatever activities you take in an industry can be all the activities can be classified under all the six six to seven headers okay and now what is the main objective of having a computer control system isn't it there should be an objective and we know that objective is nothing but uh, what a system could satisfy by the end of any process right so now what are the main objectives efficiency of operation should be there efficiency ease of operation should be there which it could be easily adapt you know where a supervisor or an operator can definitely understand and take you know be a part of it then you have safety safety is a main priority then you have improved products uh, because when you're going for a batch processing then definitely you need to think about how to improve on products so that you will be there in the market for longer time right then you have reduction in waste so waste as i've told you how to set up the time how do you add the composition the additives in a plant then you have reduction in environment impact so whenever there is some sort of residue a plant residue industrial residue and you just you know you don't treat it and you just let it in a sewage what will happen then there will be an environmental uh, hazardous condition might occur right it can be land pollution water pollution and even air pollution for that matter and reduction in the direct labor so direct labor it's like uh, you, you need not have 100 people for just lifting a uh, lifting certain uh, you know uh, you know bag or pack okay but you definitely need uh, people uh, in the, the manpower to do few packing industry in, in few packing industry where you have labeling even certain industries have also employed labeling automized wherein uh, the label automatically is, you know uh, is pasted then the barcode reading has been placed in multi batch processing so even then what happens you can always think about reduction in direct labor if you go for a small industry if the end product whatever you produce okay the product you deliver if it is less then if you have more number of people there then you'll be under loss right so we have to have uh, all the resources even the manpower uh, being properly utilized here right so keeping all that in mind let us get into what is called as a sequential control so that is one of the first uh, priority here so we can explain the sequential control with a simple uh, chemical industry the industrial plant and uh, how and we have what is called as a reactor how the valves are operated who is going to monitor and all these okay so as you see here uh, you can see a big uh, reactor this is called as a reactor a chamber and there are a couple of valves valve a you have valve b you have valve c 
D and you have E. Okay. So, uh, we have already studied what is sequential control, isn't it? Because sequential control always uh, goes in hand with batch processing. Okay. So, usually it is adapted in uh, uh, the, you know, the uh, bakery, uh, bakery products, okay, and chemical reactors, okay, industries and baking industries. Uh, so, it has a vital applications, okay. So, now let us take an example of a simple chemical reactors. Why, why is it useful? Why, why do we go for a sequential control? Why is it required? Okay. So, if you just see here, a simple uh, sequential control with a simple chemical reactor uh, in a vessel can be uh, understood. It is one single reactor. Okay. So, here we usually go with the sequential control because we have couple of additives mixed in different proportions okay, into a vessel and there could be you know, added, uh, more, uh, less additives or more additives. Okay. Uh, so that the composition of the material will be different and finally you have an end product based on your requirement right so now that's the reason we go for this kind of a sequential control system so if you take a simple example here we have a simple chemical reactor vessel this is called as a vessel and i've told you about the valves so now if you just see here there is a valve a so the first thing is Valve A and valve B are the two chemical inlets. Okay, so you're going to, ins you know, you're going to pour a bit of, uh, you know, uh, the chemical one here into this, and what you have, you have a stirrer here, okay, and you have chemical two. So chemical one, chemical two are stirred in a vessel, and the whole system is completely sealed reactors. Okay, so the complete here the vessel. The reactor chamber here is completely sealed. So you just have a valve. So this valve opening and closing on and off of the valve depends on the amount that you would like to have, the amount of chemical that you would like to add on. Okay. Then you have valve C and D. Usually they are mainly for controlling the temperature in the vessel. Okay. If two chemical compounds are added, okay. So, there should be some kind of a process, correct? So, there is addition of raw materials, there is a processing and finally you get a product. These are the three main, uh, you know, the course of action which takes place in a sequential control. That is addition, then you have, there is a processing and finally you have the product, right? So, here the main, the main uh, you know, the reactor valve has what is called as the jacket that is a water jacket what will it do it will maintain the temperature hot or cold okay so you have so how do you maintain the temperature inside the reactor is by this the water that has been circulated around the vessel and you have valve c and d which are mainly to let the cold water the the water in and out of this vessel and if there are excess then the water jacket you know will be here it ejects out the excess heat okay so this is how the controller actually functions so there are certain steps uh, a chemical produced by reaction of two chemicals at a specified temperature temperature becomes a very important aspect here and also the pressure inside the reactor right the temperature is maintained how is it maintained by feeding either hot or cold water surrounding the vessel. This is a vessel, okay. So you have surrounding, you have based on this hot and cold uh, water, you have the temperature being maintained inside the reactor, fine. So next, so the, the water flow, the water flow adjusts by valve C and D and the valve A and B, E regulates the flow of water then temperature of the vessels are monitored. Now, if you just look into the previous slide, now you have a single reactor here. So, first step is what is happening here? The first step is the valve is open, the chemical is set inside, okay? And then what will happen? There is a stirring action of the stirrer inside the reactor, fine? So then, as soon as it reaches some optimum level, okay, the valve A is closed then the same step will be repeated for valve 2 as well 
okay the second chemical will be added in and it will be stirred for certain duration of time and then when it reaches certain amount the additive amount then the valve is closed and then the stirring action continues and the temperature has been controlled by c and d by sending the water into the jacket the water jacket okay so when it reaches certain optimum temperature okay where the reaction actually begins then the timer is started so the timer is started and it stops till the complete product is been obtained so this can run you know uh, it can run for hours together because it's a chemical reaction and it has to be monitored each and every time the temperature has to be maintained okay once it is maintained the timer will be set and then from the time set up time to the end time till the temperature is the complete reaction of the chemical is brought across to get some end product till then you know the timer is set okay this becomes a batch processing after this again the reactor will be filled with another load okay washed clean and again they'll it will be reset again you're going to add additives and it this process is continuous hence it is sequential okay the valve a uh, the a is charged by the vessel a chemical check the level of chemical in vessel a and correct the amount of chemical that has been uh, added and then close the valve a then start the stirrer to mix the chemical together then you have to repeat the same steps for b2 then after that switch on the term 3 valve because you have a controller there for the supply to set point so that the chemical mix is heated up to the required reaction temperature so as soon as the reaction starts you have the clock ticking so it will be the starting point so monitor of uh, monitoring the reaction temperature uh, reaction temperature when it re reaches the set point and then start the timer and the duration of the reaction okay the timer indicates a reaction is complete so as soon as it completes the what 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 is supposed to be done you have to switch off the controller and open the valve c valve c to cool down the reactor so if you just see here you have to open you know this uh, you know this is a end product so here go here you have to what should you do you have to make sure that the valves are closed so now it is open and then this will be set for cooling once it is cooled once the temperature has been monitored in the reactor then you have the valve e open and the product is obtained okay that's what is explained here monitor the temperature when the contents have cooled open the valve e to remove the pr product from the reactor so this is the entire process of a one single reactor and it is sequential control correct so now if you have so in any of the industry you don't have one single reactor right you have multiple reactors performing concurrently or parallel processing will be happening in the in single time slot your multiple reactors right so let us take an example as to how this chemical batch processing will occur so here we have taken an example of two reactor you have reactor 1 you have reactor 2 fine and then you have the raw material which will be sent from a to which will be weighed and it will be added on to reactor 1 and you have uh, raw material for b that is two as we have defined in the single reactor we have chemical 1 and 2 we have raw material for a and b which should be added and here uh, once you have to keep two things in mind one is reactor 1 has chemical composition to be added so it is still in process when the chemical uh, you know elements are added into reactor 1 reactor 2 will be set for uh, you know washing which means it is end where the product is already been delivered and it will be sent so it will be stored in the finished product so now it is just starting the process but here it is already ended with the same time slot got it so now what happens after reactor 1 okay after reactor 1 gets completely monitored and end product is delivered what is what will happen it will go to thin down tank okay so here thinning down of this tank will happen so it will be cleaned washed and then 
after washing it will be again set for the then after delivering to the storage uh, where the product has been uh, collected so then it will be uh, then there will be a coolant that will be washed then the tank will be settled meanwhile what happens in reactor 2 is initially it will be empty because it would have delivered the product here now it will be set for addition of the catalyst along with the raw materials from B okay so once the raw materials are added then the process again the process procedure will start and the reaction completes then what happens it will be sent to a thinning down tank and then from the thinning down tank you have storage in a finished product then when this goes for a storage here you have the reactor being started okay so this happens concurrently okay so uh, why we are uh, supposed to understand this uh, concept is if you have multiple reactors okay monitoring and maintenance of that entire plant okay it becomes tedious now comes the decision making whether you have to have a supervisor control or you have to have a automatic or computer control okay so computer control is a supervisor control but if you want manually for some operator to operate then how efficient it would be because during every time slice you need to understand that after the completion of one task okay then the other task begins right so monitoring the time it is easy for any computer to do but there is again a catch because for an operator he understands if the composition has changed then the chemical reaction might be quite long okay some you know some reactions with different additives will take longer time or shorter time so it is in the discretion of an operator to understand the chemical processes so that's the reason there is a need for a supervisor control so the direct uh, digital control systems wherein you're going to have how a supervisor an operator will be guided by a supervisory control which is completely computerized and he gets a data and then he judges whether to process to stop to add by giving plenty of other software options telling that should the valve be open for this many seconds or not should it be closed should we start so there are certain options that will be created by human itself to uh, which will be actually uh, trained by a human to a computer to control the entire system so once that is done it will be easy for an operator to intervene and check how this could be done efficiently so that there will be no loss in the product manufacturing okay in this this is all about how you're going to have the computer controlled real time systems and uh, so in the next class we shall study about how can we have the both operator and the computer control that is the supervisor control being adapted in any of the plant so we're going to learn about D, ddc in detail thank you